on joy and sorrow. Then a woman said, speak to us of joy and sorrow. And he answered, your joy is your sorrow unmasked and the self same well from which your laughter rises was oftentimes filled with your tears. And how else can it be? The deeper that sorrow caves into your being, the more joy you can contain. Is not, this, is not the cup that holds your wine the very cup that was burned in the potter's oven? And is not the lute that soothes your spirit the very wood that was hollowed with knives? When you are joyous, look deep into your heart and you shall find it is the only that which has given you sorrow that is giving you joy. When you are sorrowful, look again in your heart and you shall see that in truth you are weeping for that which has been your delight. Some of you say joy is greater than sorrow and others say nay, sorrow is the greater. But I say unto you, they are inseparable. Together they come and when one sits alone with you at your board, remember that the other is asleep upon your bed. Verily you are suspended like scales between your sorrow and your joy. Only when you are empty are you at standstill and balanced. When the treasure keeper lifts you to weigh his gold and his silver, needs must your joy and all your sorrow rise or fall. Welcome friends to the series of online lectures. I have started recently the new lecture series on the drama Gashiram Kotwal. In the last lecture, I have given you a brief introduction as to the modern, what is the situation of modern Indian drama. I have tried to give you the context in which we can place this particular drama and look at Vijay Tendulkar as a post-independence dramatist. With that introduction or with that context, we can start with the discussion on the drama Ghashiram Potwal. When we look back into the history across the world, we come across the stories of good kings, bad kings, good administrators, worst administrators, strange officers and so on. If we find a benevolent king somewhere, we can find a horrible dictator at the other place of the world. We have seen a lot of people who were very humble in the beginning, but as they got power in their hands, they started behaving like tyrants. We have seen kings going crazy because of overtrust. We have seen kings going extremely bad at their citizens. So history contains lots of interesting stories to offer us. Ghashiram Kotwal is one interesting episode from the history of Maharashtra. As we know, it is not a fictional drama. Let me tell you this. Rajiram Kotwal is a historical drama, but written from a modern perspective. I'll come to that later. But let me just give you a brief note about the history of this character called Ghashiram Kotwal in the history of Maharashtra. We know that there were the Maratha rulers followed by, I mean, uh, who came after Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj who were ruling from Raigad, a place near Pune. And as, as the time passed, we see there was a decline in the power of the Maratha Empire. And during this period, that is roughly in the late 18th century, or rather 18th century, the whole of 18th century we can consider, the rule of the Maratha Empire 
was declining and it was giving rise to their ministers who were the de facto rulers. De facto means they are not actually the rulers. Nominal head is the king who were the Maratha rulers. Like it may be Shahu Maharaj, it may be Chhatra, sorry, it should not be confused with Shahu Maharaj of Kolhapur. It was a different ruler. He was a different ruler. He was Chhatrapati Shahu ruling from Satara and he was a progeny of Shivaji Maharaj's uh, children. So this was the time, the 18th century was the time wherein the actual rule or actual power of the Marathas was declining and the Peshwas, Peshwas were the ministers in the courts of the Shiv, uh, courts of the Maratha rulers but they had now got power in their hands and they were de facto rulers of and they were ruling from Pune. So the, the Peshwa history has changed the face of Maharashtra in the 18th century. These Peshwas were actually the word Peshwa comes from Persian which means the prime minister or the front forefront leader. Basically they were Brahmins who were serving as ministers to the Maratha emperors such as Chhatrapati Shivaji, Sambhaji and Rajaram and the uh, next uh, set of Maratha rulers. And the first Peshwa that is the first prime minister was Moropanta Pingale. After a few years, Peshwas themselves became the rulers, I mean they became de facto rulers and later there was a line of Peshwas, there were nine, there were nine important Peshwas and those were from Chitpavan Brahmin family, Bhatt family. Among them, Bajirav the first is considered as the strongest Peshwa. He ruled between 1720 to 17 and 1740. In fact, he extended the kingdom of the Maratha in the North India as well. In 1749, when Chhatrapati Shahu was on his deathbed, he officially declared the Peshwas as his successors. So that is how they came into power later on. So here is a list. Just I will just read out the list of the Peshwas, the important Peshwas who were ruling from Pune. First important Peshwa among the nine important was Balaji Vishwanath. He ruled between 1713 to 1720. Then the Bajirao the first. 1720 to 1740. Then Balaji Bajirao, 1740 to 1761. Madhavrao Peshwa, first, 1761 to 1772. Then it was the reign of Narayan Rao Peshwa, 1772 to 73. Then Raghunath Rao Peshwa, 1773 to 74. And then we have the son of First, uh, Madhavrao the first, that is Savai Madhavrao, or also known as Madhavrao the second. He ruled between 1774 and 1796. The story of Ghashiram Kotwal happens during the reign of Madhavrao the second, or Savai Madhavrao. We need to remember this. And after him followed Bajirao the second. And then Amrutrao Peshwa, again it was the rule of Bajirao II in 1803-1818. So this is the line of nine important Peshwas who ruled from Pune and took care of the empire of the Maratha kingdom. So these were the prime ministers, the de facto rulers who had almost become like kings and they were ruling over the territory, a large territory across 
the central and the north india as well during the reign of narayan rao peshwa and raghunath rao and madhav rao peshwa an important personality came on the scene and that is none other than their minister nana fadnavis nana fadnavis his original name and we have to remember this particular name because he is an important character in our drama here his original name is balaji janardan bhanu he is also a chitpan brahmin from satara now i am giving you the facts as they are recorded in the history we have to remember and you will see in the in the course of time that some facts have been modified by vijay tendulkar in the drama as i told you before when we were discussing the the play abhijnana shakuntala some facts from the history are manipulated for the sake of dramatization in the same way the original facts about nana fadnavis and ghasiram kotwal have been modified a little for the sake of drama they are not as they are depicted in the history so i will first tell you what are the facts of nana fadnavis according to some recorded history of course there are various versions and this has been one of the most controversial plays because of these different versions of stories so nana fadnavis became the main minister during the reign of three peshwas and he played a very pivotal role in holding maratha confederacy together amidst political instability so that was the time of lot of political strife there were conspiracies there were murders of the kings of the prime ministers and this was the time when savai madhav rao was a very young child when his father was murdered through conspiracy and since there was no other king to take over the kingdom savai madhav rao a child a young child had to make the king had to be made the king of the empire so during this time nana fadnavis role in handling the administration of pune or the whole maratha empire becomes very important in that part of the history in fact he was a very powerful minister he had shown his warrior skills in the battles against nizam of hyderabad and then with battle with hyder ali and tipu sultan even in the wars against the british army nana fadnavis was considered as one of the most important scholars in the court of the peshwa empire he was known for his wit he was known for his administrative skills then there are also some versions about nana fadnavis which tell that nana fadnavis was a man full of lust there are some facts which support to this statement and these have been captured by uh, vijay tendulkar in his play ghasiram kotwal it is seen in in the historical facts that nana fadnavis had married nearly 9 times in his life so that shows that he was a man who had lot of lust in his mind and he was his weakness was women so these are some of the important facts we have to remember about nana fadnavis who is a key character in the drama ghasiram kotwal then during the rule of nana fadnavis as a minister as a minister to the three peshwas there comes another character on the scene of pune's administrative um reign that is none other than the hero or the central character of this drama called ghasiram kotwal now again there are lots of versions related to ghasiram kotwal 
the facts have been modified here and there and in fact this play written by Vijay Tendulkar is an adaptation of the novel written by Kan uh, Moroji and, Ka uh, Moroji and Kanoji 100 years back. So there might be modifications, manipulations in the historical facts. But some authentic sources from the historical books tell us that Ghashiram Kotwal had certain great qualities as a, as a, as a police officer. In fact, Gasharam, it is. I have. I have tried to take out the history, historical facts about Gasharam Kotwal from certain websites, which have shown some important resources from the history. Of course, there are various versions retold later. So, according to some of the important versions which I found reliable, the story of Gasharam Kotwal goes like this. And in fact, we have to remember that this is one of the most controversial stories in the history of the Peshwas. So this popular version of Gashiram Kotwal tells us that he was a Kanauji Brahman. Kanauj is a place in Uttar Pradesh and thereby this proves that he was a Brahmin from North India migrated to Maharashtra. He was a Kanauji Brahmin from Aurangabad, living in Aurangabad and he had come to Pune in search of livelihood. When he comes to Pune, he became popular there with his skills of good communication and good skills of observing the people. And thus he comes in contact with Nana Fadnavis and he impressed Nana with his skills at policing, at observing the people, thereby he won the heart of Nana. And Nana made him the police commissioner. In those times, this post was known as Kotwal. He was made police commissioner of Pune. So, this fact happened in 1777. Soon after he became the Kotwal of Pune, he started ruling over the Pune very adamantly. Of course, he made a lot of improvements in the city of Pune. He brought a lot of discipline to the people of Pune. But at the same time, his rule started becoming more and more tyrannical. Like He started taking the law in his hands with the rising power and popularity. He became more and more strict towards the people of Pune and he started charging people for even silly crimes. He, he started um, extracting fines for even silly reasons from the people. There, thereby, because of all these tyrannical activities, Ghashiram Kotwal became a nightmare to the city of Pune. And his rule was almost like a dictator. Of course, with the rise of power, he almost forgot that he was actually the police commissioner working under someone. He had taken all the rules in his hands and he was ruling over the people very ruthlessly. So this goes on increasing. The tyranny of Ghashiram Kotwal goes on increasing day by day and he becomes a headache to the people of Pune. People of Pune start fearing this man, Kotwal, and the powerful rule of Nana continues like this. Once in the Shravana month, that is in August of 1791, something strange takes place in Pune. There was a there was a group of 35 Telanga Brahmins. Telanga Brahmins were coming from the modern part of Telangana, that is the old part of Andhra Pradesh. As it was their custom to move around the country for learning, for 
learning the Vedas and Shastras and performing rituals, they had travelled to Pune in order to find their livelihood and be there for some days. And they were all new to this place called Pune. Once what happens, these 35 Telanga Brahmins, they are just roaming around in the afternoon time and they were all hungry or rather they needed some rest. So by mistake, they enter the garden of Gashiram Kotwal's house and they start plucking some fruits from the garden. The gardener who was in charge of the garden observes all these activities of these 35 Telanga Brahmins. He is unable to recognize them as Brahmins and he reports to Gashiram Kotwal that some thieves have entered the garden. Now this enrages Gashiram Kotwal who was absolutely very strict man. Without looking at who were these people, without even verifying the facts whether these were thieves or these were some other people, he just captures them and puts them in puts them in a dark room, locks them up in a dark room for about three days. On the third day, morning, a man called Manaji Pakade is just moving around in the town and he happens to hear some voices from the dark room where these people were locked up and he opens the lock and and finds to his shock that some of the Brahmins who were locked up had already died. So he takes them out of the, of the dark chamber and finds out that 18 Brahmins, 18 Telanga Brahmins had died out of, of suffo suffocation. For three days they were not given any food. For three, three days they were kept in that dark room and some of them died of suffocation. Now Telanga Brahmins wanted revenge against this man who had done this kind of a horrible punishment to them without confirming the facts. So this news reaches the ear of Nana Fadnavis. Nana Fadnavis in the beginning did not believe the fact because he was in favor of Gashiram Kotwal. He summons Gashiram Kotwal to know the facts from him. And Gashiram Kotwal says, tries to prove his innocence by saying that he did not know that they were all Brahmins. But already the news has reached the king Madhavrao and Madhavrao Peshwa has ordered for punishment um, capturing of Gashiram Kotwal. Hearing this news, hearing this punishment, the Telanga Brahmins are not happy because they want a revenge against Rashiram Kotwal. They want him to be punished with death sentence. They go and make a strike at the house of Nana Fadnavis and demand for the death, death sentence of Rashiram Kotwal and unwillingly Rashiram Kotwal has to be given death sentence by Nana Fadnavis. Because Nana Fadnavis is the chief main minister in the court of Peshwa, he has to give the punishment to Gashiram Kotwal. Unwillingly, he gives death sentence to Gashiram Kotwal. Gashiram Kotwal is taken out of the town of Pune. He is humiliated in public. And then he is killed in most inhuman ways. He is killed by lynching. You know what is lynching? Uh, by stoning him to death. All the group of Telanga Brahmins go behind him and kill him by stoning him to death. And nobody cremates the body of Ghashiram Kotwal. This is the story of Ghashiram Kotwal as it is mentioned in the historical episodes. On one side we may feel that Gashiram Kotwal is innocent because he did not know that the people whom he had uh, kept in the prison for three days were Brahmins. 
nevertheless he is very cruel because whether they were brahmins or non brahmins whether they were brahmins or the thieves he should have verified facts by himself first without verifying the facts on his own he had put them into death sentence the 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 pride or the uh what we can call it the intoxication of power is so much in gashiram kotwal that he does not think about the consequences and thus he has to suffer for his actions and he meets his ultimate horrible end ultimately so this is the story of blindness because of power anything can make you blind one can be intoxicated by power so much that he can drag upon him his own death as in the case of gashiram kotwal so this is a popular version of the story which is narrated throughout the historical accounts about gashiram kotwal now there are certain other versions which i will narrate in the next lecture thank you so much